assisted by Deacon Tom Martin. Join us on June 8th and 9th in the social hall to help with dresses for Haiti. Please see the bulletin for more information. If you have fabric, you can also drop that off at the church. Teenagers will be meeting again Wednesday, June 15th. Please see week the weekend's bulletin for more information. Father Don O'Brien died early Saturday morning, June 4th. Funeral arrangements are pending. The readings for today are found in the Glory and Praise Hymnal, number 846. Our opening song is number 408, Holy Spirit, Come Now. <clears throat> Please stand. We gather ourselves in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, especially those who are visiting in our parish. So good to have you here. So the first thing I'm going to say is, happy birthday. This is the birthday of the church, so we can celebrate our birth. It is also uh, a day where we celebrate uh, my 35th anniversary as a priest, and what a great day to do that. I'll talk a little bit about that in my homily. Um, the church would not exist without the Holy Spirit, without Jesus coming, dying for our sins, and rising to new life, and sending us the Spirit. By our baptism and confirmation, we have that Spirit who empowers us to go out into the world to spread the good news. As we begin this celebration, let us call to mind God's love and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have failed in. through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord Jesus, you enter places that have been locked away by others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your word reveals the promise of the Father's love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you send the Holy Spirit to guide us in the way of truth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us praise God with the Gloria. Thank you. 
sanctify the mystery of today's great feast. Sanctify your whole church and every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now more the hearts of all believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, there were, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them as tongues of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now they were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard from them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement, they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Perithians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and all the districts of Libya near Cyrene as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in their own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning, church. Good to have you here today on this wonderful day of Pentecost. This is a great weekend to celebrate our birth of our church. This is a special day for me, too. As I said, it's my 35th anniversary as a priest. And what a great day that Holy Spirit um, called me to the priesthood. It was very important that we celebrate this day of the birth of the church. If Jesus hadn't risen 50 days from the dead and 50 days later, if he hadn't sent us the Holy Spirit, well, none of us would be here. There would be no church, no need for clergy, no need for the faithful. But because Jesus lives, because he came, showed us the way to the Father, he healed, he preached, he suffered and died and rose from the dead and sent us the Holy Spirit, We are his church. The word Pentecost comes from the Greek word meaning 50, 50th. Both the Jewish people and the Christian people had this feast called Pentecost. For the Jewish people, it was 50 days uh, they celebrated after they were freed from uh, Egypt. Pentecost for Christian is the 50th day after Jesus rose from the tomb. Now the Remember the picture, this is very familiar to us, the disciples in the upper room, and they were huddled together, and then the very breath of God came upon them. And that's what we heard from the gospel, that Jesus breathed on them the Holy Spirit. In the Acts of the Apostle, it said it was like a a noise, like a driving strong wind filled the house, and tongues as if of fire came to rest on them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So this is when our fledgling Catholic Church was born. Although at the time, they would not consider themselves, they would know themselves as Christian. The word Catholic came later down in usage after the word Catholic means universal Christian church. They saw themselves as followers of Jesus Christ. And before the coming of the Holy Spirit, you know, we hear over and over in the scripture, uh, when Jesus was working with the disciples, they were confused. They didn't get it right. They were human. They fought for first position. Um, They were just one like us in many ways. And after he died, even though he was with them uh, on on the 50 days, after these last 50 days, they still didn't quite get it. They were confused and frightened and fearful, you know, because they were persecuted. Jesus was crucified. So when he came in the upper room and breathed on them, Well, they were changed men. They were empowered by that Holy Spirit. After Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, Peter bravely went out 
into the square yard. Before, he didn't have the courage. And now, because of the Holy Spirit, he did what he couldn't think he could do before. He went out and preached. And he said, Jews and people who live in Jerusalem, give me your attention. Give me your attention. It was a risk. But now he's able to do what he couldn't do before because of the gift of the Holy Spirit. He preached the good news of salvation, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And all the disciples, they too went out and spread the good news. Imagine this, just this little spot on the map. There was no Christian, but it was contagious like wildfire. It spread across the known world. You know, Egypt, and then Israel, and Egypt, and Greece, and Rome, and Turkey, and all that area. It just kept spreading the good news because of the disciples and they had the courage to spread the good news and it converted the most unlikely candidates followed Jesus remember Saul who was a persecutor of the Christians in fact he was part of martyring, martyring Saul, uh, Stephen Stephen was stoned to death but St. Paul was converted he was literally knocked off his horse blinded and then he could see and because he was highly educated in the Jewish tradition and he was a well speaker, he was known for the great numbers of conversions to Christianity from Antioch to Ephesus. And the Holy Spirit empowered him to much of the New Testament is attributed to St. Paul. So he empowered the Holy Spirit to spread the faith. And so the church grew and grew and grew and we depended on our church for guidance. And isn't it wonderful? We have the unbroken line of successors from Pope Peter all the way to Pope Francis today. And that Holy Spirit, we believe, guides our popes. And through their ordination, they lead the church of the century. And then also the bishops and the priests and all the lay people. But not only, it seems like in every age, God has called forth leaders who were on fire by the Holy Spirit, just, to, just what that age needs to assist the church. Take, for example, St. Francis of Assisi, a very popular saint. St. Francis started his journey as a soldier. He came back and he was sick and he was praying in front of a, a cross, the one if you go to Good Samaritan Hospital to the chapel, you can see one like it. And he felt the cross speaking to him saying, rebuild my church. Well, there happened to be a little church in the valley that was falling apart, and he thought that's what they meant. So he started working on that, and then God helped him understand, no, it's the bigger church, the larger church. Rebuild my church. And so he was the one at that time who was needed to reform the church. Another good example is St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta. She was started, uh, we have an image of her on your left, my right. She, uh, an icon or a mural, she was started out as a teaching nun, but she felt the Holy Spirit call her to travel to India. And there she saw the sick and the poor and the hungry, and she felt the, the need to establish the, uh, the order and the house of mercy to take care of those people. And now we recognize her as a saint. All of us by our baptism and confirmation have received the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so that spirit is in us. So we go out in the world and the world is just crazy. You know it is. There's all kinds of things going on. And for some people, it's almost overwhelming. Partly because I think, well, we have a tendency to watch too much news. And not all the news is good for us to hear. And so if you feel overwhelmed with anything, just say, come Holy Spirit. Fill my heart. Come, Holy Spirit. Give me guidance. You're looking for a decision? Come, Holy Spirit. You're looking for a job? Come, Holy Spirit. You're looking for a permanent spouse for your life? Or you're looking for a partner? Come, Holy Spirit. You know? Whatever. The Holy Spirit is here, right here, right now, to guide us. Our church depends on all of you, the laity. We have gifts and talents. And St. Paul says, we're one body with many members. The same spirit with a variety of gifts and talents for service of all. So as I talked about, we're a diverse church, but we become one because of Jesus. Jesus is the head of the body, and he guides us. And so 
I'm going to brag a little bit about this church. We're really blessed to have so many of you who have chosen to serve in so many different ways. You've heard the call in different ways to either serve on committees or parish council. The lay leadership do the work of the church, and they are extraordinary. And some of you have heard the call to be a greeter or lector, Eucharistic minister, server. It takes about 20 people to get this mass going. And sometimes we don't quite have enough yet, so try to think about coming forward. Then we have the people that feel called to educate and catechize through religious formation from little kids all the way to adults. And they share that faith because they have the Holy Spirit. When I first started teaching religious uh, uh, theology in high school, a wise teacher said, well, you have a book, but the real book is you. Unfold what you love about the church. Then we have people who are called to serve on social activities like Spring Fest or the Funeral Dinner or Teenagers. And then some have felt to keep our, be- our grounds so beautiful. You know, Remember what it was like 10 years ago. It's really blossomed. And then not only in our church, we're called to serve our larger community. You know, people have helped out at Kearney Catholic on the school board or through activities or foundation. Others have heard the call to serve the city in different ways. Some have heard on Habitat for Humanity. All of those are Christian service. And we bring Christ with us wherever we go. We are those who preach the good news, not so much by words, but by actions. So remember, all of us have gifts, and we're, God has called us to be here, right here, right now. Just think of that. You and I are just what the church needs today to help God take it to the next place. And remember, as scripture says, you didn't choose me, I chose you. God chose us to be here. And so we give thanks to this long history of of the Holy Spirit in our church. But as the Holy Spirit has called the lay people, you people in the pews to serve, the Holy Spirit has called men and women to serve as priests, deacons, brothers, and nuns. And I'm going to talk a little bit about me. I have to tell you, I was somewhat resistant to be a priest. I felt the call early in my life, about fourth grade, but I thought it looked interesting, and it is, but I thought, no, I don't think it's for me. So I kind of drug my heels, you know, so, but God was patient, and God allowed me to grow into it. He used my prior experiences as growing up on the farm, attending a public university, obtaining a degree in elementary education, and teaching elementary education to prepare me to be the priest I am today. And 35 years ago, June 5th, 1987, It was a hot, muggy Friday afternoon. About 4 p.m. at St. Mary's Cathedral, I was ordained a priest. Then the next day, on the 6th of June, I had my first Mass celebrated as a priest in McCook, Nebraska. It was wonderful. It was so powerful. And every priest remembers that ordination, as I'm sure Deacon Tom remembers his ordination. It's just a special time. So I was assigned to work at St. Mary's Cathedral with Father Bob Chamberlain, He was the one that uh, built the new church of St. James a few years ago. And at the time, Father Bob, Father Chamberlain, was about the same age I am now and probably ordained at least 30 plus years just as I was. So we started at the cathedral and I was 29 years old, freshly, newly ordained, and I saw Father Chamberlain and I thought to myself, he's so old. I wonder if I'll ever make it that long. And here I am. So I bet the young people are saying, Father Paul, he's so old. Well, maybe by years, but not in spirit, huh? So I can assure you after the first five years, the first five years kind of drug a little bit, but after that, it flew, as you all probably know in your, in your married life. And I've served from east to the west to the middle all over and all different ministries. And I have to tell you, it's a wonderful life. Of course, there's high and low points, just like anything. But you know what sustained me is when I did say yes to the Lord, I got an inner peace. And that inner peace never left me. And at any time, even, you know, life is traumatic sometimes, even for a priest. But at peace, uh, beyond all understanding, 
helps me just trust in the Lord, put one foot forward, and know it's all going to work out. I give thanks to my parents who prayed a lot, gave a good example of prayer, and my brothers and sisters. We were a big family. We sat around the dinner table, and Dad talked a lot about vocations. You've heard me say this story before, but it's true. He said, why don't one of you be a priest or a sister? And we nudged our neighbor beside us. He's talking to you, not me. But I said yes. Anyway, so thank you all for allowing me to be your priest. God has used the people of God to mold me, to prune me, to pray for me, to challenge me, to love me, affirm me, and forgive me. So thank you for that. So, but God is calling us all to accept that call to serve in universal priesthood. So without the Holy Spirit, it wouldn't happen. So grab hold of that Holy Spirit, go out in the world, and at the last song we're going to sing today, go make a difference, huh? Because you can, and you do, and you will. God bless. Let us stand. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, his only Son of God, the only Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He decided he would die. He at the right hand. spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And now let us turn to God with our prayers of intercession. The Holy Spirit bids us to speak with confidence to God, who always responds with love. For the whole church, on this day of Pentecost, as the glorified Christ lets fall his promised Holy Spirit, that the strong wind of his coming may surge through the upper room where we have waited to kindle in each of us the fire of his love. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. For the lay faithful, commissioned by the Spirit to be a ferment in society, for the kingdom of God, that the Spirit's gift of fortitude may make them strong friends of Christ able to stand up to the demands of justice, life, and peace. We pray to the Lord. For all who are experiencing new stirrings in their lives, calls to change and growth, movements of repentance, even earthquakes of divine disturbance, that they may not quench or sadden the loving spirit who awakens within them. We pray to the Lord that our communion with Jesus in this holy sacrifice may intensify the presence of his spirit in our hearts and spread all around us the sweet fragrance of his gifts and fruits in our lives, we pray to the Lord. That the spirit may be an anointing of comfort to the sorrowful, healing to the sick, calm to the anxious, forgiveness to sinners, and refreshment to us all on our pilgrim way, we pray to the Lord. For our faithfully departed ones, that the Lord may send forth his spirit into their souls so they may be placed in his eternal life as new creations, especially Norma Jean Bierman, mother of Paige Lease, Harold Dakey, husband of Betty Dakey, and Father Don O'Brien. We pray to the Lord. For all the priests and religious celebrating their anniversaries to religious life, 
for an increase of vocations to the priesthood and religious life. We especially pray in thanksgiving for Father Paul Collins, 35th anniversary. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our intentions, especially for Father Paul Colling, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and compassion, hear and answer the prayers of this assembly gathered here together. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our sung prayer as the gifts are prepared is number 721, Holy God, we praise thy name.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice, Gracious lead us to into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made adopted as your children by uniting to them your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all people the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in professing of the one faith. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim this song. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and in willing to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The, the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them into the light of your faith. First on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, Father. We'll need two extra additional Eucharistic ministers. Two ministers. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Our first communion song is on your song sheet, Come to the Banquet. Thank you. 
communion song is sacred silence number 635 Sacred silence. 
Let us pray. O oh God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard the grace you have given, the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her, may retain all its force and that this spiritual food may gain in her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's such a gift to have so many little ones with us today. So what a blessing you are. Bow your heads for the blessing. After each blessing, please respond, Amen. May God, the Father of lights, who is pleased to enlighten the disciples' mind by now pouring in the Spirit, the paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound in the gifts of the same Spirit forever and ever. Amen. May the wondrous flames that appeared over the disciples powerful cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with a purifying light. Amen. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues, in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in the same faith, and believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're sending you forth to spread the gospel today with number 536, Go Out, Go Out. <laughs>